This is the Gamer Heaven. I'm your host, AK40 Kevin, aka the Controller Captain, and this is our Lord and Savior, aka the Bezavior. In all seriousness, this thing in my hand is a $200 controller or a $70 kit. If you've got a little DIY knowledge and love the smell of soldering flux in the morning, but what makes this controller unique or special isn't the fact that you can either build it as a kit or buy it as a controller. It isn't these four pretty damn good rear paddles, and it's not the fact it's got Linux support or advanced Linux support, I should say. Almost all modern controllers have plug-in play support with Linux. However, this bad boy has some additional functionality. But the Bezavior controller is kind of a two-in-one. Not only are you getting the gamepad out of this sucker, but you're also getting a converter that lets you use Xbox controllers, Switch controllers, third-party controllers from all types of platforms on your PlayStation 5, wirelessly if they have Bluetooth or wired if they don't. And since a good converter or adapter like that run between $45 and $60, you have to take into account that cost. This controller does a lot right, a little wrong, and this is going to be the most in-depth comprehensive review of it to tie everything together. Let's get it. This is your controller, Captain. We've reached 6,900 feet. Go ahead and start flicking the sticks and molly in the back paddles. Mm, you don't like back paddles? How about those rear buttons? We've tested almost 100 custom and premium controllers, and we're only at the beginning. You need a thumbstick guide or a tutorial on how to overclock your controller? Check out the controller playlist. Bing bong. Controller Captain out. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes. This controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con, shortcuts, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. And a secondary disclaimer specific to this controller, since it does have the functionality of being an adapter or converter, one of the devices, or one type of device, I should say, that you can plug into the back of this sucker is Cronuses and Zins and all those other notorious devices that have been used in all kinds of multiplayer scenarios to get an unfair advantage by using features that aren't programmed into the game, such as Turbo or Macros. And while these features might be fine for use, in a story-driven offline game, maybe a repetitive, grindy game, an MMO where you're grinding for resources and you can just hold down a button and it spams for you, you know what I mean? Just don't be a dirt ball, or if you don't have balls, don't be a dirt gal. <laughs> what I'm saying here is have a little goddamn integrity. we'll touch on that later, by not plugging one of them stinky devices to the back of this. The coolest thing about this controller, hands down, my favorite feature about it is that you can adapt Xbox controllers and Switch controllers, all from this little module on the back, but you can also use a keyboard and mouse, but you can also do those Cronuses and those Zen devices that have been used for cheating for over a decade. So please don't be the guy or gal to add to that terrible reputation that those devices have. So what the hell is this thing? It's our Lord and Savior. It's our Xavier. This company, Beloder, is primarily known for their adapters, their converters, if you will, similar to what I review from Brook and 8-Bit Doe. I've actually reviewed quite a few adapters or dongles, allowing you to use various controllers on platforms they weren't necessarily necessarily meant for, but built into the controller, which is super sick. Now, in order to browse up here, you have products, you have the Bezavior. Now, you do have two options, technically three, for purchasing this controller. One is going to be a DIY kit if you want to source yourself, stock controller, a DualSense, take it apart, and install it yourself. I will say it's a rather involved installation process, one that I was originally going to take on myself, but I'm glad they sent the pre-assembled controller, and I will link in the description below a tutorial video from this guy who made a good video showing you how to install the kit, if that's the route that you decide to take, but he even mentioned that he wouldn't recommend it, and for most average games, to just go ahead and pick up the pre-assembled controller. The only really cool thing is you can get the all-white shell if you go with the DIY kit, as where if you get the pre-assembled controller, it only comes in black as of current, which I think looks awesome, but you just have that extra option there by taking the kit. As for the price difference, this is currently $160. We'll take into account shipping in just a sec here, but both colorways of the kit are $70 currently. I wonder if this is really a sale or if this is just like a constant running sale where it's a marketing tactic, where this is always the price you're going to pay over here. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not calling them out. I'm just saying. Might be one of them permanent sales. Now, no Bezavior products are sold directly through Amazon. It's weird to say directly through Amazon since they're a third-party vendor, but they don't store them in their warehouses or anything, as you can tell that they're not. Actually, this one is on Prime. Okay. They have their adapters, but they do not have the Bezavior controller currently, which leads you to purchase on their website where you are unfortunately paying shipping and you are subjected to this shipping policy. If you purchase in the US, it will dispatch from the US in 7 to 15 working days. I don't believe that means it arrives in 7 to 15 days. That just means it dispatches. It gets shipped out to you. 
and they have a breakdown for Europe and China as well. If you go with the kit, you're paying $10. If you want to double down and get two, maybe one for a buddy, fun day soldering together. And for the pro controller, you're looking at $40. So maybe that's why they're running that sale is because it actually does come right back up to that recommended $200 MSRP, which pricing wise is on point with a lot of other PS5 pro controllers, whether that's the DualSense Edge, which is $200 or the third party variants as well, such as the Scuff Reflex Pro or Hyper or Cinch, Aim. There's a lot more. As for the packaging, included accessories on the Bezavier. It is sealed in cellophane, so let's slice into that. The main key features of the Bezavier is the fact that you have a beloader adapter basically built on board, and you can also run converters or devices such as Cronuses, which I'm going to talk about later. A little disclaimer about that. My longtime viewers will know exactly where I'm going and what I'm going to say, but we've got to have integrity. No integrity. Do you want some fucking integrity? Don't you wish everyone had some goddamn integrity. Now, almost all modern controllers do have support for Linux, just works for them. However, this is different. This is open source for free development of macro functions and a bunch of other things. Thanks, Jesus. You do have a built-in screen, which is literally the only way that, it was the only way to really make this work because there's a lot of features that you need to scroll through. But this is an important feature and the controller just simply wouldn't function without it. And then of course, the pro controller staple of four rear paddles. Doesn't have to be four, but we prefer it. <laughs> Spun around quick. The included carrying case is definitely one of the reasons I recommend going with the pre-assembled controller as opposed to buying the kit unless you're an absolute DIYer, you have a DualSense laying around that you've been specifically wanting to tear apart and do a build on. This carrying case is pretty decent, it's not the best as you still can press down the thumbsticks. That's me pressing down R3 there, but there is no USB-C cable in this net pushing down on the thumbsticks, which I do like. Your cable's actually down here in this little plastic guard. Have a little postcard from Pro Controllerville USA. Actually, it's all the instruction manuals. They have a variety of them. I'll get that up nice and close for you in high resolution. You can do what you want with them. Scan the shit out of them if you want. Included accessory-wise, you are gonna have six thumbstick caps, which are these little generic slipovers, very similar to what you get from Play Vital or Extreme Rate, which is funny that they're actually the same company, or not the same company, but they are a partner or sister company Company, brother company, they're in cahoots with each other. You have these high domes with these little ribbed niblets on there, which uh, feel mm, okay. You have these mid-rise concaves, which feel pretty soft and supple, very nice on the fingertips. Not the most grippy, but they do feel just nice on the fingers. And then you have two short domes with the niblets on there. You will have this USB A to C adapter, which you will be using, plugging into the back of the controller if you want to go wired with a different controller other than this one. Then you have a 10 foot rubber USB C cable. Good to see dust covers on the USB A and C end. No Velcro wrap just a little bread bag tie, pretty basic little cable. And then you have the piece de resistance, the entree. We've been snacking on these delicious appetizers, but it's off the table now. We got the entree here. Oh, yes, those are actually pretty goddamn nice. Oh God, yes, I see what all the hype is about. We'll be talking about those in the rear button slash paddle section later, my God. But right now we're talking about cosmetics. Let's get a better backdrop, shall we? I know it's kind of nitpicky, but the blacks don't really match up because they went with the stock Sony chin, which is like the cheapest parts bin special plastic I've ever seen in my life, as where this faceplate actually feels and looks pretty nice with that kind of flat matte satin black, if you will, that charcoal rolling up on you in a murdered out suburban all blacked out. This looks fucking sick. And then you get over here and it's like, oh, uh, I bought these at the flea market. Here you go. I do like the face buttons cosmetically. I think those look fantastic. They also feel great. We'll talk about that later. They actually don't feel like the stock DualSense buttons. Getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to go ahead and give cosmetics an 8 out of 10. It would be like a 9.5, maybe even a 10 out of 10 perfecto score. It's just that damn stock chin right there. It's really just... It, it, as for the build quality, for the most part, this is on par with pretty much every third-party pro controller that I have tested. As far as panel gaps, seams, the stress or flex test where I'm actually trying to bend this sucker in hand and break the wonderful controller they sent for review. The only thing that raised the tiny eyebrow for me is shaking it back and forth, you get this sound. which I thought at first was the face or action buttons because those jiggle or wiggle on pretty much all controllers. However, these ones are very secure and barely wiggle side to side, very nice. But that jiggly McWiggle you're hearing is actually P1 and 3 over here. The top paddles, ooh, you can really see it over here on P3. A lot of side to side play there. I'd still say it's within spec of tolerances for my, my standards here at Gamer Heaven, but there is a lot of play in there. You don't really feel that when you're holding them and using them normally like the good Lord intended, slapping noobs back to the lobby in Call of Duty. But if you are just gonna hold your controller and test every 
your little component for play and make sure you got your $200 worth, th this might make you feel not too happy. As for a warranty on the Bloater website, if you click at the bottom return policy over here, as they do not have anything warranty wise, if you control F it or search over here in the search bar, you're going to find this very taut seven day return window. And then after that, you're not going to see any mention of a warranty or anything like that. I'm going to ask the representative that sent this controller for review if there's any information that I'm not seeing here, but it does appear as if the policy in place is that there is no warranty, which would make sense considering this is based off a kit that you can just install yourself at home. As for the D-pad or direction buttons, this feels identical to a stock DualSense, so consult my stock Sony versus stock Microsoft who makes better controllers, Xbox or PlayStation video, or jump into the future and consult my best PlayStation 5 controller video where I lay out a smorgasbord, pretty much all the premium pro or custom controllers for the PlayStation 5 platform. It should be a humdinger. Is your brother a singer? He's Jimmy's brother, the guy, the singer. His brother. That's not me, man. Oh my God. Sing for us. What does feel tighter, in fact, snug as a bug, is going to be these face or action buttons over here. They're very quiet, which are stock dual senses, and also very short to actuate, about one millimeter if I say, and also share that distinct flatness that the PS5 buttons have, which I really like in comparison to the rounded Xbox buttons. Also cosmetically, I love the symbols on here. These are glossy, so they are going to get fingerprint smudges from the oils on your hand and whatnot. Swipe them off with your shirt. And as not offensive as these face buttons are, I just don't really find myself using them too much because if you swing her around on backside, that took us. Oh my God, I like what's back there. These hips, these haunches, these rear paddles are pretty kick-ass too. There's a section for it later. You already knew that. You've, this probably isn't your first Gamer Heaven review, but if it is, there, there is a section that, 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 that goes over these bad boys back here. As for the accessory button suite, we really don't need to spend any time here. If you've held a PlayStation DualSense, you know what you know what's going on here. A lot more than Xbox has. You got the six axis gyro, you got the touchpad, you've got the haptics, you got a built-in speaker, the adaptive triggers, immersion. That's a word that gets thrown around a lot. If you're playing competitive shooters, you don't give a shit about immersion. You're just immersioning yourself all over the competition. But when you're playing an offline story-driven game, it's nice when you're crunching on sand or you're pulling back a bow and it gets stiffer and stuff. That shit is nice. I I appreciate it. Also, nothing to report here about the thumbsticks, analog sticks, joysticks, front niblets, giblets, diblets, whatever you want to call these suckers, because they're stock. I mean, you got your potentiometer modules in here. You got a short little riser or shaft, and then you got those hybrid caps that Sony's been using since the PlayStation 4 era. And uh, anti-friction rings around the outside of the thumbstick gates, but that's not a Bezavier feature. That is a stock Sony DualSense feature. So you glide along smooth plastic when you're on the outside of your thumbstick gates like that. These aren't swappable, which kind of sucks, but you do have those included thumbstick caps, which which is pretty cool. Let's get those over here. <clears throat> so in that little included carrying case, I have these thumbstick caps. I'm gonna put the short dome on the left and I'm gonna put that super high dome on the right. Uh, so the right one's okay, the high rise. However, this left one, since it's hollow, it, it basically pushes in and you can still feel that there's a hybrid underneath there. There's a little bit of slack or slop. Maybe if you take a heat gun to it or your sister's hair dryer or something, it'll actually shrink that rubber a little bit to where it fits on there tighter. And it doesn't rotate or wiggle or anything like that. But when you push it down, clicking down on the stick, it kind of pushes in more than I'd like. It has a squishy, weird feeling. Probably replace it for maybe, let's try this one. Uh-uh, this one does the same thing and it's slippery. It feels good. It's like a little treat for your finger, like velvet or suede, but it's slippery. So I'm going to go stock on the left and then this bad boy on the right. That's my call with it. Playing with this controller, there's no stick drift out of the box, but I want to see what it was looking like in Gamepad Tester. It's not the most beautiful resting value. Good neutrals, good defaults, if you will. But these aren't too far off from that center crosshair. They're not really wandering the yard too much. Get that circularity test in. Pretty on par for potentiometer thumbstick modules, which are generally between that 12 to 15 percentile range. Can't get much lower. Can't even get down to the one percentile range. For example, those mini sticks from Thrustmaster. A couple of other gamepads I've reviewed recently have been down there in that one percentile range, but these aren't bad at all. Rear paddles, I am a pretty big fan. There's a couple of aspects I wish were tweaked that would make them much better, but these are pretty kick-ass. Most importantly, these are very ergonomic, extremely comfortable, where you just want to naturally rest your hand as you wrap your hands around those palm grips, spread your fingers wide to get a little airflow through there. You're covering a paddle, which feels very nice. I will say they're just a little bit lighter than I'd like. I feel like I'm not getting any false actuations, but they're, they're, they're close to getting false actuations, and I have to grip the controller a little bit lighter than I'd like, just because as soon as you squeeze you're activating those bad boys. Also, they are pretty noisy. Cut that background music, DJ. Quit spinning the stacks of wax. Unplug the iPod. It's a different sound for the bottom and top paddles. I will say the bottom paddles do sound better, a little bit quieter and more low frequency. That's the bottom. Still a little louder than I'd like, but sounds very similar to the aim rear paddles right there. Yeah, very. And then the top over here. 
much louder. I don't have my decibel meter right here, but actually you can do that with a cell phone and an application. It would also be nice if these were removable somehow, like you could just pinch a clip right here and then pop them out, or if they were metal and magnetized like the Microsoft Elites, but they don't really feel flimsy. You'd actually have to get your finger up there and try and break them off in some kind of stupid weird way, but just using them naturally, they feel pretty secure. They don't have any rubberized coating or anything, but grip isn't a real problem here because your fingers just naturally wrap around them and cover pretty much all of them. So it's not like you're slipping over them. You can rebind this on the fly, which is fantastic. I think that should be just the, an expected feature, a staple of a pro controller. You shouldn't need some application because a lot of times they require a PC and these gamers only have consoles. That happens. Some people don't own computers. You can rebind these on the fly, but it's a pretty long process because you have to scroll through this on-screen menu as opposed to just being able to hold down a remapping button for about three seconds and then you can hold down a face button and back paddle together. Boom, binds them, move on to the next one. 15 seconds, you're done. These, not so much because you have to scroll through the menu. For me, it reminds me a lot of the PlayStation 4 attachment for the DualShock. It's always so interesting to me that Sony released that damn near the end of the life cycle for the PlayStation 4. Such an awesome accessory. People really liked it. It sold pretty good. Overall, it was talked about quite nicely, but the PS4 only had a lifespan of about a year at that point before the PS5, you know, shouldered it out of the way. Running our good buddy DS4 Windows in the background to spoof the PC to think in this DualSense controller is actually an Xbox 360 controller, so we can run X input test over here to get the stock input lagger delay, which I'm gonna tell you right now, right up front, it's gonna be four milliseconds on our 250 hertz stock clock, same as a stock DualSense. Over here in the Lord of Mice overclocking software, and we are seeing our DualSense controller over here not overclocked, stock clock for an estimated six milliseconds of input lagger delay. We're actually around four, and we're gonna pin the needle, so to speak. We're gonna rev this all the way up to 8,000. That's right, 8,000 hertz. See what that be like. Go ahead and unplug, replug. The controller will pop up this time with the overclock reflected. Let's measure those results. Ah, that's right. Got to run DS4 Windows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There she is. In it to win it. Oh, hello. Holy bejesus. Ooh. Run another one. The test completes very, very quickly. We can get it a little bit lower than that 0 0.91 millisecond. Also, unbelievably consistent. You can't get the minimum and maximum much closer than that unless they're making out with each other. But they're shoulder to freaking shoulder. Jitter also this low. 0 0.02, eh? And that polling rate is over 1,000. Mm, whipping and dipping in a circle, ripping and dipping in a circle, not gonna last very long because it gets that thousand samples so quick. Um, 0 0.93, oh God, we can get lower than that. L let me just warm up real quick. Yeah, I'm not getting any lower results, but they're not any higher either. We're definitely in that under one millisecond of input lag or delay range, clearly showing over a thousand hertz, very consistent. What did you say his power level is? It's over 9,000. 9,000? There's no way that could be right. I was very pleasantly surprised how easy it is to navigate this onboard screen. You only have two physical buttons. One is a check mark over here for confirm, and one is this button, which means go back. And if you are on the main menu, this will also shut off the screen. So once you have the controller turned on, this is paired to the PS5 in the living room. So I'm probably controlling it, making it do a bunch of weird stuff, but that's okay. Press this checkbox and it will wake up the screen. And then by using the D-pad, you can scroll through the different functions. The first one is gonna be mapping. That's gonna be onboard mapping of not only the rear paddles, but the face buttons, D-pad, whatever you want. You're going to press the check mark to enter it, and then you're going to have your four paddles there, P1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm scrolling through those by pressing up and down on the D-pad, then by pressing right, I can control what those are bound to. You do also have control of the standard buttons, such as the bumpers and face buttons, which have this little NA mark, but if you change that, it will actually rebind them as well. Pressing the back button, going down to turbo, pressing the check button. Currently, it will show that I have turbo functionality off for all of the buttons, but if you want to engage that to where you hold down a button and it will spam it automatically for you. Maybe you're playing a fighting game and you just want to punch somebody continually by holding down a face button, or you want to make a semi-automatic gun fully automatic. Again, I do not advise doing in any kind of multiplayer online scenario. You would engage that here in the turbo function. Auto turbo is a slightly different variant where instead of holding down the button and it just spam pressing, you just press it once and it will continuously press that button for you. Combination, this is going to be four button macros. So you can set up four different functions here, you know, cross, cross, circle, triangle, and then you press one rear button or face button for that matter, as you can select those here as well, and it will perform that function for you. Learning is deep macros. If you want more than four button presses, you want 36 button presses. You simply start the learning process,
process, do all your inputs, stop the learning process. It's a little more complicated than how I just described it, but luckily there are written PDF instructions as well as their tutorial videos, which those QR codes on the placard lead to are all pretty damn good. And that's how I got up and running with this. Multi-sets, you can think of this like four onboard profiles, although it's not just the button bindings, it's whole setting sets for everything that you're doing in here. Bluetooth, language, mapping, turbo, all that will be controlled under four different multi-sets. Bluetooth, you might be a little confused. By turning this on, you can have third-party Bluetooth controllers connect to this, skip off of this to the PlayStation 5, and then you're wirelessly using Bluetooth controllers. And then language, which you only have two options, English and not English. And then if you screwed anything up, go to restore to factory, confirm it, and you will restore yourself to the factory settings. Going wired is more steps and more clutter as you can get up to three cables if you're using a controller that doesn't have an internal battery. Start with the Bezavier controller off and plug in the OTP included adapter to the USB-C port and plug the USB-C into that into the controller that you're trying to adapt. In this case, this Nintendo controller from Ghoulie Kit with Magnetic Hall Effect thumbsticks. Then plug a second USB cable from the front of your console to the top of your controller in the normal USB-C slot. Now turn the Bezavier controller on and you should be up and running. However, if you have a controller without an internal battery, it's strongly likely the only to plug in a third USB-C cable to the port on the side of the OTP adapter and plug that into a wall charger, portable power bank, or another port on the console itself. But surprisingly, there were actually quite a few third-party controllers that I just simply couldn't get up and running with the Bezavier using it as an adapter. For example, all of my Razer controllers, so the Wolverine Tournament and Ultimate, all of my Thrustmaster controllers, so the eSwap SNX and the Forza Edition. I could get power to the controller as long as I ran three cords. You have to run external power to actually, you know, power the controller that doesn't have a battery, but even still, I would recommend picking up dedicated adapters or converters from a company like Brook. Brook is my strongest recommendation over 8-Bit Doe and other companies that make adapters as they have the most compatibility and have been doing it the longest and just have the best track record. This Bezavier controller is really cool for being able to use Xbox controllers on PlayStation or Switch controllers wired. However, like I said, there's a lot of wired batteryless third-party controllers that I tried, Victrix Gambit, that I just couldn't get up and running. So in that that aspect, I'd still recommend keeping yourself a little adapter in your controller drawer. So is this controller worth a pickup at its current price point of $200? If it didn't have the feature or functionality of the Xavier adapter built into it, I would say no, because at $200, you have things like the DualSense Edge, you have pre-built customs from Hyper and AIM that have features that this controller does not, such as trigger stops, swappable thumbsticks, rubberized grips, nicer carrying cases, for example, the DualSense Edge. My hair looks kooky right now from wearing headset editing all day as part of the job occupational hazard if you're just looking at the Bezavier as a pro controller and you're not going to really be using it for its adapter functionality i would say there are other pro controllers in that 200 price point that'll fit your bill for ps5 and pc better however the fact is that you can use this thing as an adapter as a converter it can do all that cool linux stuff although i don't know how many people are actually picking up this controller to do anything with linux based uh development and stuff but this controller definitely is lacking some pro controller staples, some expected features such as swappable thumbstick caps. Yes, they include those little slip overs. That does work. It just don't hit the same. Nothing in the means of trigger stops or trigger locks, which isn't a huge deal whatsoever, especially because on the PlayStation 5 side of the house, you have the adaptive triggers, which I like to make full use of when I'm playing on that console. But binding the buttons can be a tad slow in comparison to other pro controllers on the market where you just rapid fire off bindings. But I will say pros department coming at you. Those four paddles feel phenomenal. They're a little bit loud and I wish they were removable. However, they are very comfortable. They're very ergonomic. They feel good. They're also just a skosh light for me. I haven't accidentally actuated them not a single time in gameplay, but that's just because I've trained my brain to kind of hold the controller with a loose grip to not assault those back paddles back there. Overall, this is an absolutely solid PlayStation 5 and PC controller that does get my recommendation. Like I said, if you're picking it up and you're not really going to be adapting or converting any other controllers, you're just going to buy it and use it as one pro controller, then I I personally think you should look elsewhere or give a stern look to some of its competitors that are in the identical price point. But those don't have a built-in beloader on the back that can convert and get you running a ghoulie kit magnetic hall effect controller on PlayStation. Can't do that. Yeah, this thing is pretty rad. It is linked in the description below if you want to check it out. Drop in the comment section below your opinion of the Bezavier. Probably a lot of positive comments, I would assume, considering this has been highly requested over the last six months or so. I am finally rattling off, knocking out all these reviews 
reviews back to back that have been highly requested, just sought after by the majority of my audience, and I haven't been able to get to them, and now I am, one after another, popping them off, popping a cap in your ass, 187, watch out, that was weird, yeah. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below to get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding. Starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.